Welcome back to Networks Tech Talk, a Samsung podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Pickens, and we've got a great conversation for you today. With the rise of global warming, industries are looking for ways to reduce their energy usage, leading energy efficiency to become a major topic in today's world. The information and communication technologies industry is estimated to contribute 2% of the world's global carbon emissions, but only 15 to 20% of the power in a mobile network is used for data traffic. The rest is where telecom vendors and operators are looking to make major improvements in power reduction. Cutting energy usage and the cost savings that comes along with that are significant goals for mobile companies. GSMA Intelligence reports that nearly 85% of network managers and buyers rate energy efficiency and sustainability as very or extremely important and their highest rated priority. Today, we're going to talk with Derek Johnston, head of 5G marketing at Samsung Electronics America, about what the telecom industry and Samsung are doing to help reduce global power usage and carbon emissions. Welcome, Derek. Hey, Kaylee, how are you? Good. Um, So to begin, how is 5G different from previous wireless generations and how it looks at energy conservation? Sure. Uh, So 5G was the first uh, mobile standard that was developed uh, with sustainability in mind in, in the sense that uh, when the standard was developed, uh, the the standards body looked at spectral efficiency and improving spectral efficiency 90% over 4G LTE. And so inherent in that spectral efficiency is is energy efficiency. So uh, so again, the, the standard has the built-in kind of a sustainability uh, as, as part of it and the evolution of the mobile technology. So a 90% improvement in spectral efficiency, I feel like that's aiming pretty high. What are operators and vendors doing to help reach that goal? Sure. So there's a variety of things that that we have done with uh, both our operator uh, customers and ecosystem partners. And so uh, to start 4G LTE, uh, when you have the that deployment, a lot of the bands uh, that were initially deployed were on single band radios, for example. And so now we're starting to get to form factors where we go to dual and uh, tri-band radios. And so those radios were, were packing more spectrum support into a single radio can do things like share a power amplifier. And so that helps reduce the overall um, power draw of the network. There's other technologies like massive MIMO and beam forming technologies where cramming more kind of capacity and the ability to serve users into a a single radio, but also the energy that is required to transmit those particular, their particular data stream to an end device is also much more efficient. And then lastly, uh, you know, when we start to look at things that, that Samsung is focused on, like the software-driven RAN, we're taking uh, the RAN and virtualizing it. And by nature of virtualizing it and, and making more of the function software-driven, we're able to introduce features that uh, are specific to energy savings and things that are helping the operators dynamically uh, adjust, the, the, for example, the, the power usage of the network when it's not being used and to turn down some of those radios and save a lot on energy. So uh, there's a lot of uh, different initiatives that uh, we're employing to, to get to that uh, that optimal uh, usage, if you will. So I don't think it's any surprise to anyone, but um, you know, 5G is obviously gonna require a lot more cell sites than LTE or 3G in order to meet those capacity and latency requirements. Um, what is being done to reduce the power needed at each site? Sure, so um, you know, I, I think it's an excellent question, but I think you know, one thing that I'd like to address is that it's a little bit of a myth um, out there where you say that 5G is going to require you know more cell sites in and of itself. So while it's true that uh, that is really a function of demand as opposed to the actual the technology itself. So okay, if you so for as an example, if you were to take 5G and deploy it on the same spectrum that is deployed with like for example 4G LTE, and then put the same you know environmental constraints on it, uh, users and same area, et cetera. Uh, 5G would be inherently much more uh, efficient in terms of and, and require a lot less energy in order to support those users. Now, that being said, what we do know is, for example, if you look at, at South Korea, um, after two years after they had built their out their nationwide network, those uh, subscribers were using upwards of two and a half times the amount of 4G LTE service. And so uh, we do know that, you know, again, if you build the network uh, and it has more, you know, more speeds and throughput, uh, users will, will ultimately use that um, that available uh, network capacity. And so that will require, again, more 
uh, capacity to be built into the networks and thus more sites. So one approach uh, that the industry is taking is you know, the construction of the cell sites themselves. And so there are things uh, in terms of the radio technology that we're building in uh, where we're able to, again, design the radios to um, throw off less heat, which requires less HVAC. And so we can build sites are, are being redesigned uh, to reduce the overall HVAC, uh, you know, the need for air conditioning within uh, within the cell sites themselves. And then there's also things um, that I referenced earlier, things that are really enabled in a, a software-driven uh, RAN or virtualized network, where you do things like smart sleep, where we can reduce the power usage uh, or power output of those of radios when the traffic demands aren't as high. And so those things, uh, you know, there, there are forecasts out there that, that smart sleep uh, functions will be able to enable up to, you know, 40% reduction in terms of base, baseband power usage. And so those, that's real meaningful um, uh, you know, uh, delivery in terms of, of costs and, uh, you know, energy efficiencies to the, to the operator's bottom line. So we've, covered how 5G is going to save power in the telco industry, right? But how are those impacts going to affect other industries? Like what are the 5G and sustainability impacts on other industries related to this? If you start to think through the, you know, kind of the network effect that, um, you know, 4G LTE you certainly had this, right? It was a, a platform that enabled a lot of, of other business, you know, new business uh, developments and, and um, certainly enabled the growth of, of certain areas. And so I think we, you know, I think there's, there's been a lot of discussion that 5G will do the same. And to that extent, uh, you know, I think the industry is looking at the enterprise space as really uh, probably where the most impact will be seen initially from, from 5G. And so I think there are areas around automation in industries like uh, transportation, manufacturing, where there is an incredible amount of automation that needs to happen, or you, where you can drive efficiencies, and particularly uh, around energy uh, efficiency, right, and savings, because those those industries typically use an incredible amount of energy. Their facilities have, you know, a ton of either equipment um, or or systems that are running uh, constantly. And so, one city examined about thirty one different use cases over several industries and forecasted significant uh, energy savings that will be achieved over the next uh, few years. And and in those particular industries that I mentioned, like manufacturing and transportation, they're forecasted to save about 20 to 25% um, of, in terms of the total 5G enabled carbon abatement across those those use cases um, uh, by 2025. So that's just, you know, again, just right around the corner. Yeah. So it's going to improve, you know, processes and also save on power. That's pretty impressive. Exactly. So exactly. are there other power saving technologies that Samsung is using to reduce their customers' energy usage? So I think, you know, Samsung broadly, uh, you know, in terms of sustainability, it's it's um, part of our part of our core values. It was even before, you know, sustainability became you yeah, have the word of the year, if you will. The hot topic yeah. of the day. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so it's it's you know, we've tried to design our products with um, you know, kind of an eco conscious uh, approach and have a um have, a, have an initiative, a broad global initiative called Everyday Sustainability, where again, whether it's big programs that we're putting in place or even just making small changes um, to business processes that will, will, again, affect sustainability or energy savings or things that we can do that are, that are going to help um, the environment, uh, you know, is kind of built into the DNA of the company. Now, that being said, on the networks business, you know, the first thing that we look at, obviously, is, you know, in terms of our product design. And so there are two areas that we've been laser focused on um, that help drive, you know, sustainability. One is on the chipset side um, with our with our chipset business. And the other piece is, is driving more uh, software into the RAN. And so just at, at MWC this year, we uh, launched VRAN 3.0, which is taking, you know, our industry leading position in uh, virtualization of the RAN to the next level. And that's enabling us to introduce a whole host of new features, some of which are um, specifically focused on energy savings. And so it's things like power amplifiers that are equipped with bias control. You can turn, you can adjust the, the voltage down while still maintaining um, adequate service levels, um, gives operators flexibility in terms of their basal MIMO to lower, again, with a lower power consumption when uh, the usage on site is not necessarily 
uh, you know, at peak levels or it's off peak. And so that's in addition to kind of some of these sleep mode savings, uh, things that we're talking about. And then in terms of the chipsets, uh, that I had mentioned our, uh, as we had designed and, and manufacture our own chipsets, uh, the system on a chip, uh, approach that, that, uh, or our SOCs that, that combine everything from TPU, memory, GPUs, stacking all these things into a single chip. Uh, our, our designs have been able to produce over um, 70% kind of power consumption savings over previous generations. And so the, there's some amazing stuff that our, our, our semiconductor business has been able to do, uh, to really improve both at the radio and on the device level, the, the power requirements, um, and so that's, you know, again, on the radio and, uh, and our software side of the business, uh, the contributions that we've been making, but we also take that all the way down to how are we packaging our equipment and, and sending it to our customers and making sure that we've got the lightest, you know, biodegradable and, and eco, uh, friendly, um, materials in, in included in the, and those radios that we're shipping out. So, um, you know, we're trying to look at it and at, at it from an end to end perspective in terms of the contributions and, and, uh, things that we could do. Derek, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. With global mobile data traffic rates continuing to rise and applications requiring low latency proliferating, we will see networks continue to densify and the number of cell sites balloon. That said, the telecom industry is committed to finding ways to bring the amount of power used and lowering our carbon emissions footprint to run our networks. The Mobile Net Zero report from GSMA reports that 63% of the industry by revenue and 44% by connections have committed to rapidly cutting their emissions over the next decade. We are all excited to see the power saving techniques and features we've discussed today continue to advance around the globe. And to our audience, thank you for participating in today's podcast, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Networks Tech Talk.